138, Psalm 138. And uh, I want to read our first two verses here. He says, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all of thy name. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Our Father, again, I thank you for the privilege of being in the house of God. I ask you to help our hearts on today and our minds to be consumed with Christ and with thy word. We thank you, Jesus. Name. Amen. I, I like this uh, uh, verse. Uh, I, I like this last phrase there. I learned it years ago. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. And, and uh, I, I, when I learned it, it was actually a misrepresentation of what that verse means. When you understand Bible exposition, you'll find out we say a lot of things that we might think, but are not what the Bible is really teaching. And uh, a few weeks ago, I will say this, I gave you, uh, uh, gave us some homework uh, to do, and, and, I, and, uh, and for those of us, that, uh, for those of you who took time and uh, redeemed the time to consider the challenge and meditate on the scriptures, I'm confident it was a blessing. I know not everybody has time, and most of us don't redeem time. That's reality. Not everybody has time, but most of us don't redeem time. And on one page, I ask for what comes to your mind when you hear the name Jehovah God. And a similar thing should come to your mind when you hear the name the Lord Jesus Christ. as do come to your mind when you hear the name Jehovah God. They should be very similar for the same person, even though they're two different persons. We know that for, uh, for him, one of the all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And so, uh, but on the other page, I asked for a promise that God had given. And so, uh, I did that for a purpose. Because I was reading and meditating on this song, and on that portion of this song, and I was studying out this song, and I said, what is this song about? And I want to look at our song of this song. It's a song of praise. It's a, it's a song written by David, the sweet psalmist of Israel. And uh, I want to look at, at this, this song of praise and specifically at this little phrase. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. The first time I heard this phrase, uh, hammered into me. Uh, I heard a man telling me uh, that God has magnified the Bible over his name. That the King James Bible was to be magnified more than the name of Jesus Christ, of God the Father, I, I heard it. They were trying to emphasize the importance of the Bible. And they overstated it. They stated it. And I, I mean, think about this. His name should be called Wonderful. Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. His name is Holy. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are things that are his name. And are these names that describe God? Are they supposed to be lesser than the King James Bible that promotes those names? There, there's something wrong here. Now, do not get me wrong. I'm a King James Bible guy. From 
cover to cover, I believe it's right. As a matter of fact, on my cover it says Holy Bible. I believe that's right too. I'm even for the cover. Amen. Oh, yes. But his name is everything. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. How can this be that somebody would make such a statement as that the King James Bible is to be magnified over God's name? I do not believe it. It can be. For the name of God magnifies the attributes of God. The wonder of God and the fact that he's wonderful. The, the fact that he is a counselor, that we can hear from him, he can speak to us, and we can get counsel from him. The fact that he is the mighty God. The fact that he is the everlasting God. The fact that he is the Prince of Peace. The fact that he is holy. All tell us about him. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, in Psalm 34, he says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Our job is to exalt his name. But according to the phrase, the song of praise, God magnifies what he says more than who he is. We are to exalt who he is. But he exalts what he says. For he does not say, Thou shalt magnify thou my word above my name. He said, For thou hast magnified thy word above all my name. God magnifies what he says. We're to magnify his name. We're to magnify who he is. Our response. Not to magnify what he says, but to magnify who he is. Why do we praise the person of God? The person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do we magnify him for what he says? I trow not. That's good violence. I trow not. No is the answer. Not because of what he says. We magnify him because of what he does. We do not praise God because he makes promises. We praise God because he keeps promises. Because I know many a person that make promises. I'll take the trash out. Then you come home and the trash is Y'all ain't gonna believe that. You just gotta have kids to find that. That, that could be true. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I'll take care of that. And you come and find out it doesn't get taken care of. Y'all ever, ever have seen that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Just because somebody makes promises, what they say is not why you praise. It's because of what they do. God is because of what He does. You can notice the person of praise is God. I will magnify, I will praise thee. You can find a passion of praise here with my whole heart. And you can find the place of praise is before the God. Before everything else. In the presence of everything else, everyone that exalts himself, who thinks they're somebody, who thinks they're some kind of judge or right to have a right, I'm going to praise him. But why is praise in verse number two? For thy loving kindness 
and for thy truth. Not for who you are, but because you do what you say. Because you showed loving kindness, mercy, when I was forsaken, when I was put aside, when I, when I was fallen, you showed loving kindness, you showed mercy. When I failed, you showed loving kindness. Mm -hmm. You never left me nor forsook me. You brought me up out of the horrible pit out of the miry clay. I can praise you for all that you've done because you've kept your word. I can depend on you in the midst of my troubles because thy word is true. What you say, you're going to do. This is why the psalmist is praising. This is what he means by this, this phrase. That was, that was magnified thy word above all thy name. What you say you're going to do, you do. You'll swear to your own hurt and change not. Even though it cost you your only begotten son to redeem wretched vile sinners who you made to love you and to worship you. But when they went away, you said, I'll do it anyway. Because that was magnified thy word above all. And let me say, you would ruin your name if you did not magnify your word. If God was a God who could not keep his promises, and would not keep his promises, what good kind of what good is it? If I could not depend on him in the midst of my distress, what good is he? If I thought he's a God that could lie and would lie. If I thought that I could read the word of God, that he says, I've given them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And if I read that and I said, whoo, that's good, I'll never perish. <coughs> Nobody, no man, not even myself can pluck myself out of his hand. I can't do it. I'll never perish. And then God says, oh, that's not true. I see, I said no man can pluck you out of my hand, but you can jump out of my hand. Oh, 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 I'll never perish. I guess people that want to sit there and say you lose your salvation, say you get out of his hand, didn't read that first part. They shall never perish. Don't even read that last part, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Yeah. They say, well, you didn't know he plucked you, he jumped out. Well, I'm just never going to perish. I ain't too worried about that last part. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Either God's telling the truth or God's telling lies, God cannot lie. Amen. Come on. I'm just trying to get you to understand. What we, when he says he magnified, when the psalmist says thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name, he is not trying to make us worship the King James Bible. Because that's not what he's even talking about. He is not even talking about the whole counsel of God. He is talking about the promises of God. Thy loving kindness and for thy truth. He says, Though the Lord be high and lifted up, yet he has respect of the lowly, but the proud he knoweth far off. What was he resting in? The fact that God cares because God has told him he cares. God has taught throughout the scriptures that he cares for his people. And David is over here saying, you know what? I'm not too worried about it. He had respect to the lowly. I don't, I'm not too worried about it. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Why? Because he girdeth me with strength 
to make them my way perfect. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of mine enemies. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Oh, no matter what's going on, I can depend on you. And thy right hand shall save me. He brings me up out of the heart. Out of the miry clay. He may bear his holy arm. Oh, thank God. And the Lord will respect that with concern. concern. He said, I'm resting in these promises because he's a God of his word. Mm -hmm. David could look at his, the faithfulness of his friendly father. And say, your word is good. If you say it, I can expect it to be. I cried in my distress, and you gave me grace to go on. Thou answers me and strengthened me with strength in my soul. How did he do it? He gave me word and season to them that were weary. Mm -hmm. All he had to do was speak a word. Old Sister Hannah. Old Sister Hannah. Y'all might not remember Sister Hannah. Old girl, she she had a she was living in a house where she had a husband. Her husband had two wives. That's not a smart thing. And uh, especially when one of them's having babies and the other one ain't. And one of them's in her in competition with each other. And old Panina, she was making fun of Miss Hannah, persecuting. And uh, prod Miss Hannah. And guess what happened? Miss Hannah started getting a little bit bitter. She had bitterness of soul. Then she poured out her soul before the Lord. And as she poured out, and, and they said, uh, and Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thy handmaid by grace in thy sight. So the woman went away and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. When God's man spoke God's word, hey, he said, go in peace. And she said, guess what? I am. Hey, it's as good as answered. God's heard my prayer. Hey, man, I'm full. I'm telling you, all it takes is the word. Yep. It'll strengthen you in the inner man. David cried as his and God gave him grace to go on. David didn't necessarily deserve all that. But can I say this? David could depend on all that. Verses 4 and 5 are interesting. They let us know that all the kings of the earth shall praise thee when they hear the word of thy mouth. If they hear your voice, Harden not your heart, their heart. Guess what? They'd be doing the same thing I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Because your word is true. Your word, what you say, is true. If they would ever hear the words of Christ, they'd be just like that. They'd be passionate and praising. And there'd be every place praising. He's our protector. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Isaiah 54, 17. He's our protector. You know what his name did? Bring us to the mind of a promise. He's merciful. Thy mercies are new every morning. He is merciful. When you think of God's name and you think of him as merciful, he is a merciful and faithful high priest. But then you think of a promise. Thy mercy endures forever. He's holy and majestic. I dwell in a high and holy place with him also as a contract on the spirit to revive the spirit of the home, to revive the heart. Of the contract. I will well with you. 
who is holy and majestic. He is salvation. Behold, God is my salvation. I'll trust and I'll be afraid. Why am I not going to be afraid? Because the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. When you think on the names of God, about who He is, it ought to bring you to the promises of God of what He's said He'll do. And then it brings you back to the plans or the, the times of God and, your, and your, the places you went with God, how God has done all these things for you. My friend, dear brethren, he's a God that's worth this. He's a God who you depend on. He's a God who you trust. He's a God that cannot lie. And what he says, he does. He's not a man that he should be. Or a son of man that he should be. He doesn't change his mind about doing what he says he's going to do. He might not be able to do everything he says he's going to do right at that moment. But he made a promise to Israel. I'll give you this land. But he said, not this generation. You're going to die in the world. But I'm still a God of the world. Your children will be able to land. And they need it. And you rest in his promises. When you think about that, God magnifies his word, what he says over his name. Because what he says is what he does. We magnify his name because his name tells us who he is. He magnifies his word. Oh, think about him. When you think about him, he says, my word, my word, what I say, I'll do. Always. I've been young and I've been old. Not quite. Yet, have I never seen the righteous forsaken? You have seen baby bread. He said, You had me put through the test, preacher. Probably not as much as some of you have. But I can tell you this the little bit I have saved. He's been faithful. Do I want to go through anything worse? Absolutely not. I am allergic to suffering. It hurts. I cry. I am a sissy when it comes to suffering. I tell people, you could be have you could have cancer and be dying. I can stub my toe. You know what really matters to me? Same way you are. You tend to forget about everybody else. Think about your own self. Say, why? Because that's the nature of man. That's it. But once I get my focus right, get my focus on the Lord, I can say, you know what? Even if I had the cancer, He'll bring me through. I'll go through. So you haven't been through that much. I said that. And I don't want to, but oh, I don't want to go through. That's why I don't like the idea. I'm just you know, rambling now. I don't like that idea of both tribulational people. I said, do they want this or what? I'd be looking for every way to be pre-tribulational if I had, if I did, if I what, if I didn't have the Bible. I'd be twisting the scripture to make myself pre-tribulational. But the scripture's already pre-tribulational on the rapture. That's so it. I don't have to twist it. Yep. But even, I mean, I don't want to be, I don't like suffering. Yeah, come on. What kind of masochist are you? 
who says, I want to go through this. I want to prove that I'm a Christian. I don't have to prove that I'm here. There you go. I don't have to prove I'm a hypocrite. I'm a hypocrite. Say, so how do you know? I got the paper that told me I am. They said, well, you better prove it. I said, why? Mama believes I am. Daddy believes I am. My wife believes I am. My sisters and brothers believe I am. Everybody who meets me and meets my family believes I am. Guess what? <laughs> Why am I going to try to prove it? <laughs> I don't have to prove I'm a Christian. I am. Amen. I was born again. I was born. My father believes I am. Amen. I believe I am. I believe the book says I am. Yeah. Ninety-nine percent of the Christians I know think I believe I am. What am I trying to prove to the world that I'm a Christian? Why? I'm just going to be a Christian. I am one. A dog doesn't know how to prove they're a dog by barking at his mark because they're a dog. Right. They don't meow no. like a cat. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> Brother John, you cows don't meow, do you? No, I mean. Oh, okay. Mules? Mules meow? No. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the day. Thank you for the people of God. We certainly love you.